So, second talk of Melechet Lash. Shall we mix it up a little bit? Let's learn how to do it right. Last week, we started talking about the melacha of lash, of kneading, which is a kind of mixing. And we gave the basic rules, the basic guidelines of what lash is about. Today, we'll continue that talk, but let's give a quick review for the basic rules of lash. And then from there, we'll go into the common day situations that we encounter lash on Shabbos. As we mentioned last time, the melacha of lash is to take solid particles and mix them together into one entity through the means of a liquid or even a thicker substance. We said like mayonnaise or honey, that would accomplish it as well. We also noted at the end of the shear that if the pieces are big, and they kind of stand alone, so then that's not the malach of lush. So for example, we said then bananas and sour cream with the big pieces of banana, that's not lush when they're put together with the sour cream because you see the big pieces standing alone. And Mr. Brewer notes that cucumber salad, as another example, might be a problem because there we have very thin slices of cucumber and really when they're combined together with the liquid, that does become one entity and that would be a problem. We should note though, it's not always about being small and large because sometimes you can have a situation with small pieces, it's not lush. For example, if you have yogurt, let's say, with a little bit of granola, the granola isn't combined together into one entity. The pieces of granola, or as my kids like, the chocolate chips, shh, I'm telling you when I give them chocolate chips and their yogurt, but the chocolate chips, they stand alone in the yogurt. They don't combine as one. However, if you put a lot of the granola and less of the yogurt, where really it becomes granola held together by yogurt, that is a problem of lush because that becomes one entity. So the ratio between the solid and the liquid does play an important role in defining whether something would be malachas lush. Now, the most practical examples that come up very frequently are two tuna salad and egg salad. There you have small pieces of tuna, small piece of egg. When combined with the other ingredients, the mayonnaise or whatever else you're using, now all of a sudden we have one entity and we have to figure out, is there a hectare? Is there any way to permit making these salads on Shabbos? Now, as we mentioned last week, things to consider are the following. There are two steps in the process. There's the pouring of the liquid, pouring of the water, and then kneading it together. Those are the two steps in doing it. And there are three levels of mixture. Well, one is not a problem of the malach of lush. That's when it still maintains its liquid form. Like when you have the hot cocoa or the baby formula where it's still liquid, but the two problematic mixtures potentially are a balila raka, a more liquid mixture, which is horrible, and a balila ava, a thicker mixture, which doesn't really pour. Now, we also noted that the only iser de oraisa, an iser from the Torah, is in a balila ava, in a thicker mixture, and we noted that there's a machlokas, whether one has to be concerned about the malacha, even at the pouring stage, or only at the mixing stage. Mixing, for sure, is an issue, but the question is, what about when you pour in the liquid? As we mentioned, the halacha follows the majority opinion that the pouring is not Minat Torah. Nevertheless, we said L'Chathila. Ideally, one should be strict because it is the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda Anasi that pouring is a problem with the Oraisa and therefore we have to contend with that issue. Now, we noted last time that Melechus Lush, in contrast to many other Melechus, a Shinoi, doing something in a different way will make it permitted. It's not always the case, as we noted. If you turn on a light with your elbow, that doesn't make it permitted, even though it's an unusual way to do it. However, in the Melech of Lush, sometimes it does work. Gemara says when we're dealing with a Belila Raka, a soft mixture, which that would not be a Melech de Raisa, the order in which you pour makes a difference. It's considered a Shinoi and permits it. So if you normally put in the solid part and then the liquid, and now you would switch and pour the liquid first and then the solid, switch the order in which you pour, that would be considered a shinoi to permit it. However, the Gemara only says it by a blila raka, by a blila ava, by a thick mixture, the Gemara does not introduce this heter. Apparently, this is not enough of a shinoi to permit an iser del rice. And therefore, according to the strict opinion of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, there would be no heter to make a blila ava because you can't get past the first step. There's no way to make a shinoi in the first step of the process, which is the pouring of the water. However, as we noted, many Rishonim and the Shulchan Aruch Me'ikr had in Paskins, that even the first step is not Minat Torah, even for Blila Ava, and therefore, in a difficult situation, we can rely on the opinion of most of the Rishonim, and we can go with a Shinoi in the first stage, and the examples the Shemir Shabbos Kalchasa gives is, let's say you forgot to do it before, or it's something you can't do it before, you need to have it fresh, or it's, let's say, for a baby, where there's a real need to make it. In those situations, one can permit making a Blila Ava. We'll talk about how to make a Shinoi in the Gibel, in the mixing, but even getting past the first step of mixing things together, in those situations, a blila ava, you would be able to do it. The Mishaburah says it's better to change the order. So let's say you're saying baby oatmeal, and normally you put the oatmeal first, and then you pour the water. So if you're doing it on Shabbos, you should put the water first, and then you should put the flakes. And we should know this is only if you make a thick baby cereal that doesn't really pour from one bowl to the next. That's a blila ava. If it's a blila raka, we don't have to be in such a difficult situation because there it is permitted lechatchila to do it with the shinoi, and it just be very important to change the order in which you pour, again, depending on what you do first normally during the week. What if it's an even 
heat and there's no normal way to do it during the week. So the Mishabura says we can rely on what the Gemara calls the Shinoi way, which is with the solid and then the liquid. Okay, so just to summarize, we have two types of batters. We have two types of mixtures. We have a Blila Ava, Blila Raka. We have a thicker mixture and a thinner mixture. The more problematic one is the thicker mixture. However, in times of need, you could do a Blila Ava in Shinoi. And the question is, what exactly qualifies as a Shinoi? What is Shinoi in this situation? So, so far we've discussed the Shinoi in pouring together the solid and the liquid, and that has to do with the order, which really you should avoid an ablila ava. If you need to, you can, and an ablila raka, you also can do it. What about the shinoi, the next stage, which is the gibul, the mixing? So the example the Gemara says is to do it shesi and erif, to mix it in a crisscross form, as opposed to normally we mix things around and around. So the shinoi would be to go in a crisscross. The chazunish actually adds, and not only is it a crisscross, but really if you want to do it properly, you have to go across, pick it up out of the mixture, and then go across the other direction, because otherwise you're going to start to make a circle. Ramosh Feinstein says, as long as you're careful not to make a full circle, that would be okay. Ramosha adds another shinoi might be to use the handle of a knife or a spoon. And other posts can say, if you use your finger, that also would be considered potentially a shinoi and you mix it. So if you want to make that baby cereal and use your finger, that would work. So where does this leave us? It's not always so easy to do that. If you've ever made that baby cereal, it's really not so simple to make it in that way. You really have to give it a nice mix. So if you could do it, great. If not, not. The post can say, if you use the back of the spoon, it seems like even the normal motion would work. So there is some way to do it, but you got to make sure to do a good shinui there. The more problematic situation is egg salad and tuna salad. If you make it well, it's a thicker mixture. It doesn't pour from one to the other. And I'm not in the kitchen, but from what I gather, the way you make these salads is you take tuna and you mix it with mayonnaise. So it's a binding agent. Or you make the egg salad, you cut up the eggs and you mix it with some oil. So again, the oil binds together the pieces of egg. So how do we make these blila ovas on Shabbos? So it does sound like it might be preferable to do it before Shabbos. As we've noted previously, in a blila ava, it could be that a shinoi doesn't work, or at least for the pouring. However, it's been noted already by the postkin of the minog for seems to be a long time has been to make egg salad and tuna salad on Shabbos. Perhaps the reason, as we noted, that the Shmir Shabbos writes, if something won't be fresh, can't really be make it before Shabbos, so then it would be permitted to do it on Shabbos. But we have to go through the steps. So the first step would be to change the way you normally do it. So if usually you probably put the tuna down first and then pour in the mayonnaise on Shabbos, you should do the opposite. Fill up the bowl with however much mayonnaise you think you need and then put the tuna in. And the next thing would be to have a shinui in the way in which you mix it. So make sure you either use the back of the spoon, your finger, or to do shesti and era, which is to crisscross, as we said, and perhaps even pick the spoon out. The post can also know that let's say if you have this egg salad and you've made it in your permitted method, and now you want to put in some more, you want to put in some pieces of vegetable or whatever it might be into the salad, that too would have to be mixed in a shino. You'd have to invoke the shinois every time you want to add items to that mixture. Okay, very interesting. I would suggest though not using your finger, especially if you have the Queen of England over. Better use the backside of the fork or something like that. Sounds good. I'm giving the halachic advice, not the practical advice here. Great, wonderful. Shkoyach. Hey, a pleasure to be. Always great to learn together. Amazing. So we'll continue next week with the next Melacha of Shabbos. For more short and fast-paced talking Torah clips, make sure to check out our YouTube channel.